Many people got swamped this afternoon with the rain. Some streets unable to handle it, and there's some hail. We aren't done yet. Kathy is tracking yet another system. Plus, more migrants from Texas arrive in Denver, but what happened today at Civic Center Park was different. And then I saw him come back down really quickly, and I said, what's going on, buddy? And he handed me the bag of drugs. Quite a shock, an unbelievable discovery at a McDonald's playground. That mom went straight to the police. I'll tell you what they told her. And the Nuggets getting ready for game two. A live look at the court tonight at Ball Arena. The fans are ready. The Nuggets want to take a stranglehold on their series. Our afternoon storms have been a rough ride as of late. Another system swept through the metro area, bringing with it lightning, thunder, heavy rain, and hail. So far, we haven't seen as much hail, not, not compared to last week. No tornado warnings this time around, but viewer Jen Walton did catch some gentle rotation of these clouds up north of Longmont. And with all that rain came more flooding areas of Longmont underwater. No ground is visible in this picture. And another one from Amy Perlis shows that trash can there just seems to be floating away. Well, maybe we'll get that. We'll get it, but we've seen. And as a matter of fact, I think this is the University Hills uh, street flooding that Kim was just talking about. And uh, up on the right side, you're going to start to see the trash cans doing their lap of the neighborhood, which is, was pretty cool. His street in University Hills became a river. He said lightly that he now has waterfront property. Anyway, a lot of this has subsided. Taking a live look over Denver right now, not so bad, but much of the unsettled weather is still on the way for tonight, Kathy. And that's really the headline, Tom, is even though we've got sunshine over downtown Denver, we've seen some heavy rain already. There's another round coming around 6, 7 o'clock, another round coming in around midnight on saturated soils. It's just going to make the flash flooding scenario playing out in eastern Colorado and the north metro area much worse tonight. A lot of water. Flash flood warning, Boulder and Weld County until 7 o'clock. Flash flood warning outside of Lyman and Flagler through 7 o'clock in Lincoln County. We're seeing two three, four inches of rain already with more water coming in. We've had the pea sized hail. We've had frequent lightning. We've had some damaging winds. These storms have not gone severe yet, but they're moving so slowly. It's a lot of water in a small area. Decono right now is the area we're watching Longmont, Erie, Platteville. We have a flash flood warning out for you. Get to higher ground in that area. Already two to three inches of rain on the ground and more showers coming off of the foothills. Please do not try to walk or drive through areas in and around Longmont, Decono, Erie or Platteville because of the flash flooding and the rapid rise in the creeks and streams in that North Metro area. It extends down to Lafayette and Broomfield and then out onto the Eastern Plains. That's where all the water is for now, but future cast will show additional showers coming off the foothills at 8 o'clock and then again at 11 o'clock tonight. So this is going to be an ongoing scenario with the flood threat really continuing through much of the day tomorrow. We're looking at showers continuing through the evening with mostly cloudy skies and some areas of fog coming up. The Friday storm outlook and a look ahead to a drier weekend. Thanks, Kathy. Texas's Republican governor finally did today what people here in Colorado have long suspected he might do. There were 41 migrants who arrived on a bus commissioned by Governor Abbott and the state of Texas. They came to Denver Civic Center Park this afternoon. Nine News reporter Angeline McCall had the chance to speak with a few of the migrants long after they got off the bus. And Angeline, uh, they shared an interesting story with you in Spanish. Yeah, we spoke with several just a little while after they got off that bus, and many said that they were thankful for what turned out to be a free bus ride. Several told us that Denver is a final destination, and others said that they're continuing someplace else. So one guy told us he's going to Chicago, for instance, and this gets him a little bit closer. Now, uh, Governor Abbott says uh, that he sent people here, migrants, 41 in total, the city says, and seven were children that arrived in downtown Denver this afternoon. And in a press release, Abbott said until the president does more, he will continue sending migrants to self-declared sanctuary cities like Denver. When we asked the people who rode that bus, they said it did not feel like a political game or stunt to them. For them, it simply meant a free bus ride. So we asked one man what he would say to the Texas governor. No, que agradecido con él y gracias por el apoyo que nos brindó de sacarnos de allá hasta aquí. Y en verdad muy agradecido con él. 
Up until now, we've seen Texas nonprofits chartering buses. We've also seen people paying their own way to get a bus ticket and then make their own way to Denver. So this is really a first to see the state of Texas and the governor of Texas chartering a bus with people to Denver. And uh, Mayor Hancock in a statement said that this is really political theater. A spokesperson for the city told me that they are concerned about more buses like this arriving with more migrants. So you have this kind of uh, difference of reaction, right? You have the migrants who are really thankful for a free bus ride, but you also have the city that is frustrated frustrated with how this is playing out. Right, and the politics behind it, potentially. Thank you, Angeline. Now to Jefferson County, where a toddler discovered a bag of dangerous and deadly drugs. It happened at a McDonald's. And tonight, his mother still can't believe what her son did find. Here's 9 News crime and justice reporter, Matt Jablo. Doesn't feel like reality. It started out as a fun trip to McDonald's for Jordan Anger yeah. and her two young sons. Yeah, so I have two toddler boys and they were really hungry. The first time either of her boys had been to the Golden Arches. We were out in this area running errands and I decided McDonald's pancakes it was. It turns out the pancakes were the least memorable part of the trip. Yeah, it was mind blowing. It was 10 o'clock Wednesday morning. Jordan's three year old son Atlas and one year old son Theo had just finished eating at the McDonald's on Sheridan Boulevard in Edgewater when Atlas asked if he could go to the play area. He made it all the way to the top, to the third level where the slide is. And then I saw him come back down really quickly and I said, what's going on, buddy? And he handed me the bag of drugs. At first, Jordan thought the pills were oxycodone, a prescription painkiller. But to be on the safe side, she brought her sons and the unopened plastic bag. So this is the bag that he found. To Edgewater police, who identified the pills as fentanyl. And as soon as the officer saw it, he put gloves on and was like, you need to go wash your hands. This is not oxy, this is fentanyl. One day later, Atlas with the police officer. Like Jordan said, says she is still in shock about while. what happened. Yeah, was just really surprised. And hoping that her story serves as a cautionary tale. My main thing is like to get what it looks like out there and to also help people have those really hard conversations with their kiddos so that they're not like if they find it opening it or tasting it because based on poison control, it can happen like within minutes. Like a kiddo can be in a really bad state. Edgewater police say so far they've not been able to find any witnesses or video that could help identify exactly who left the pills at the McDonald's. Tom. Yeah, it's a cautionary tale, as she says, but also a scary one, Matt. She is still, as she said, trying to get over this. Thank you, Matt. Within the last couple of hours, prosecutors filed charges against a now former officer in a deadly crash. That ex-Aurora officer was going more than 100 miles an hour without any lights and sirens. Surveillance footage caught Eduardo Landros racing to a non-emergency call seconds before that crash. The man in the other car, Elias Anderson, died. Landros resigned from the department after the wreck, but he now faces charges of vehicular homicide and criminal negligent homicide. Nine News legal analyst Scott Robinson said the charges represent changing times. It's very rare for a law enforcement officer to be charged in a crash when they're responding to a call. Um, but we are in an era where police officers are being held accountable much more often than in the, the past, the not so distant past. No court date has been set yet for Landers to make his first court appearance. Rather, 9 News at 5 continues in a minute. And of course, we're going to have much more on the Nuggets as we get ready for Game 2 coming up in just a few minutes. Stay with us.